Let's look at unpaired versus paired designs and how that relates to two sample t-tests, where that is with independent samples, versus a paired t-test, which for us in our book is the new thing in uh, the new chapter. Um, first question, we want to know if drinking Mind Blow Energy Drink, which I just made up, uh, helps performance on a kind of quiz designed to test quick calculation. We have two days available to do experiments on student volunteers. And uh, one important thing is the quizzes have multiple versions which are calibrated to be equally hard. And we'll see why I put that in to forestall uh, an objection later. So describe an experimental design that would require a matched pairs T procedure to analyze the results. So um, uh, where we match pairs together. Well, first we want to think about why we might want to do any kind of matching here. Um, it's always to reduce variability. And the variability that we're going to have here is if we have a bunch of student volunteers, there might be uh, folks who are just uh, better um, through experience um, at um, the quick calculations of the test. And it'd be nice to reduce that variability in some easy way. Well, one way to do that is to have the same exact student experience both conditions of drinking the energy drink and some sort of placebo. And we're going to just have them drink water as the placebo. Okay, So that's going to be a matched pairs design. How would we do that carefully? So each student should experience both conditions. Is there still any randomization necessary? Well, yes. Um, it's going to be necessary to randomize the order they do things. So here's one way to do it. It's not the unique answer to this kind of question, but it's a good answer. Um, we're going to take the group of students. We're going to randomly uh, select them into group one and group two. Group one, on day one, they're going to drink the energy drink and then take the, the quiz. Okay, of one of the one of the versions of these quizzes, and they're all supposed to be they're different quizzes, so you can't memorize the answers to the te the questions, but they are supposed to be uh, very close to equally challenging. Okay, on day two they'll drink they'll come back they'll drink water this time not an energy drink and they'll take another quiz, uh, but of equal difficulty. Okay, and um, so that same student has experienced both conditions, and we're going to take the difference between those two scores for that one student. That's going to be the data point. So it's the mean difference in that student's quiz score that's going to be the data point. Now, the order might have had an impact. Maybe uh, they get tired of this stupid experiment, and they do poorly on day two, or they've sort of seen the kind of quiz, and maybe that's a little bit of an advantage to get familiar with the quiz, even though they're supposed to be roughly the same difficulty. So we're going to go ahead and have some people do water first and then the energy drink second. Okay, So even if there is some impact of seeing this kind of quiz first, uh, that's, going to be, that's going to be randomized out. That's going to be controlled for. Okay, And then we're going to look at um, the mean differences in the quiz scores. Okay, So that's something where we've controlled for the variation of the individuals by matching, by doing a match pair design. Could we do another design? Well, we could. And th there is still a bit of a concern that even though we've got this group one with one order, group two with another order, um, it might be a little bit hard to figure out what's the effect of having the very same person experience the two, the two different conditions. It's definitely good that we've done them in both orders, but it might introduce a little bit of uncertainty. If that's the major concern, as opposed to the variability in the students, then we could do an independent sample procedure. My money probably would be, in this kind of situation, on the match pair design. But it really depends on the specifics of the situation. But we, and we definitely want to compare this um, together. Ooh, let's see. It's not really showing up. OK. Um, if it was just independent groups design, this is where we would analyze using a two-sample t-test. We would first just group the students into an energy drink group and a water group. And the energy drink group would drink the energy drink and take a test. And then we'd bundle all the average score of all those people, ignoring any of their individual variation. And we'd bundle the water drinker's scores as well into a mean. And then we'd analyze the mean difference. Okay, So this still could work. It's just that if the sample size isn't too big, we might uh, run the risk of having a lot of the, the better test takers in one group or another, and that would skew the scores. Now, of course, the whole point of randomization is that that's supposed to guard against that. But you can often get away with a much smaller sample size um, if, you use match, if you use pairing to eliminate the variation. Okay? And you're going to find f uh, finer differences as well. Maybe the difference is not that big. Maybe it's just a couple points on the test. It might be significant, though. You might well be able to detect that because everybody in this group is going to have 
this is the two point difference and maybe everybody in this group has has the, has the same two point difference maybe the energy drink really, really is helping if it's a two point difference you you might see that in the the match pair design whereas in this design you might not see it if it's swamped by the the natural variation maybe it's a two point difference and the the standard deviation of the scores in here is 50 and the standard deviation of the scores in here is 50 then you're not going to be confident that you can actually uh, you've detected a difference okay so um, that's really the answer to C here. Why would perhaps the first design be stronger? And it's because a matched pair design controls well for certain kinds of variation and allows us to find subtler differences. We're going to talk in class about, and you see in the book, about you might get from this, you might get two box plots that look very, very similar to each other when they're put next to each other. And yet, if you compare person to person across those data sets, there's actually a consistent change one way or the other. You're never going to see that in second design. You can see a small but consistent change between one person on the energy drink and the same person on water if you use the paired design. Okay. I'm not saying match pairs is always better, but in this case, it probably is going to be better. Okay, second question. We want to know if a new breast cancer chemotherapy works better than the standard chemotherapy. Each is administered over an eight-week period. Okay. Would an independent sample design or a matched pair design be more appropriate in this case? Think about it for a sec. Pause if you want. The main thing is there's a very strong contrast here to the other um, example. In the first problem, we had this little silly test for a psych experiment, and it took two days to do the whole thing. And it was not that hard to um, set up a situation where they take one test and then they take another test and there's probably not a drastic effect from taking the one test on the other. And it's also not unreasonable to make them do both. Here, if we did a matched pair design uh, similar to what we did before, we would say, okay, half of you do the new therapy for eight weeks and then the standard therapy. Um, that's a very strange thing to do. We're trying to test one or the other. And taking the standard therapy after the new therapy would probably completely change the effect of the standard therapy. And vice versa. If you did the standard therapy and then the new therapy, it would be completely different. Okay. So this is not something where um, we can't do matched pairs here since um, the treatments cannot be combined. Let's assume that it just doesn't make any sense to do one and then the other, and it would just totally make give completely weird results. And in addition, be probably ethically responsible to, to do that. Okay, They should do the eight weeks of chemotherapy and then stop, because chemotherapy is pretty horrible. Okay, Because um, it can't uh, keep, be combined, and um, there are major ethical considerations. Okay, So, okay, so let's suppose we have this design instead. Okay, um, an independent sample design. Suppose that the experiment separated a group of 50 breast cancer patients randomly into two groups of 25, did the new treatment on group 1 and the old treatment on group 2. At the end of eight weeks, the patients were tested for the concentration of a cancer-specific antigen marker in their blood, and we're going to assume that a higher concentration... Oh, that's not a concentration. There we go. means more cancer cells that are still pleasant. So that's going to be our... our, uh, our experimental data. The amounts for group 1 were entered in list L1 on a TI calculator, because these researchers can't afford a computer, um, listed from most to least, just for convenience, and the amounts for group 2 were similarly entered in L2 from most to least. Okay. And then what they did was they did a paired t-test applied to these two lists. Won't tell you all the data that it produced, but it rejects the null hypothesis of equal mean so the null hypothesis here would be that the, the two treatments don't differ, and so the mean concentration of the antigen should be equal. That's a natural null hypothesis. And it rejects that null hypothesis with p equals 0.04. Okay, so let's say we used an alpha level of 0.05, and we're saying, okay, we think this is significant. The question is, what is wrong with this conclusion? Think about it for a sec if you want. Okay. The point is, this test is absolutely, completely inapplicable here we didn't do a paired design there's no compare there's no pairing between the lists so it happened to be the first entry on the list l1 was just whatever patient in group 1 that had the most cancer antigen in their their blood 
and the first entry in L2 was whatever patient happened to have the most uh, uh, most in their blood at the end of eight weeks uh, from group two. Okay, but there's no natural pairing between those those things. It's not the same person. It's not people who are related in any specific way. There's nothing um, creating the pairing here. Okay, so there is no natural pairing between each entry on list L1 and the corresponding entry, just the like the fifth entry in L1 and the fifth entry in list L2. Okay, okay. We cannot use a paired t-test when it wasn't a paired design for an independent group's design. Okay, you gotta match the test you used to the design of the of the study. Okay, now suppose a two-sample t-test was used. So that's actually looking at the mean of the first group and the mean of the second group and you need to know their standard deviations and you need to know the ends then we plug it into the two sample t-test procedure on the calculator let's say that fails to reject the null hypothesis with a substantially bigger p-value okay that's usually where you'd start to reject the null hypothesis let's say we make the decision to reject the null okay could this be an appropriate conclusion well we didn't I didn't tell you a lot about quality of the design and um, uh, all the other conditions like nearly normal and all that kind of stuff. Subject to the other conditions, which I didn't tell you about, it may well be appropriate. Okay. The main thing is the difference between B and C, that we didn't use the completely wrong test. Okay. A two-sample t-test um, is the one to use for independent groups. That's assuming they really were random and independent. And with this small a sample size, we need to check the nearly normal condition pretty well. Okay. Um, but I wanted to get across, I didn't want number one to give you the impression, oh, we're just going to pair from now on. That's the new test, it's better. No, there's going to be a lot of cases where we do independent sample design. It's just not going to make sense to match. Um, and then we still need to go back to the two sample t-test.